Biden era as Joe Biden takes oath of office later today. He will be the oldest person ever sworn in as president in the U.S. history. Meanwhile, the outgoing president Donald Trump in his farewell address before leaving office said that he took what he termed as on the tough battles and the hardest fights. However, President Trump has still not fully conceded the result of last November's election, which he lost to Democrat Joe Biden. Good morning, I am Bipashna Tamang and these are the headlines of the hour. The hearing on the writ petition against the dissolution of the House of Representatives ends inconclusive. Hearing to continue today. The National Farmers Commission, indifferent towards the farmers' plight despite the lapse of four years, raising questions on its existence. Joe Biden to take the oath to become the 46th President of the United States. President Trump makes his farewell address before leaving office. And Leicester moves to the top of the Premier League after sweeping aside Chelsea with a comfortable 2-0 victory. The hearing on the writ petitions filed at the Supreme Court for the reinstatement of the dissolved House of Representatives is ongoing at the constitutional bench. The hearing session yesterday ended inconclusive and will resume today. Meanwhile, at the hearing, Chief Justice Cholendra Shamsher Rana raised question to the writ petitioners regarding their views on constitutional provision that recognizes the leader of the party with majority at the parliament as the prime minister. Chief Justice Rana questioned the lawyers arguing on behalf of petitioners regarding the alternative government if the dissolved lower house would be reinstated at a time when neither the ruling party with more than 138 lawmakers has officially split, nor the no-confidence motion against the parliamentary party leader has been registered. Chief Justice Rana also argued that the Constitution has not envisioned of an alternative government based on other clauses if the government would be formed based on Article 76 and reiterated that there is no point of debate on special rights of the Prime Minister. Advocates including Rudra Sharma and Harka Bahadur Rawal claimed that there were no basis to dissolve the lower house. Senior advocate Chandrakanta Gyawali meanwhile argued that the dissolution of the House of Representatives should be viewed from the point of the Constitution to clearly understand whether it is a constitutional or a political issue. The hearings on the writs will continue at the constitutional bench of the Supreme Court today. A new strain of coronavirus first detected in, in the UK and confirmed to be more contagious than the current coronavirus has been detected in Nepal as well. Three individuals have tested positive for the new variant, which is believed to spread 70% faster than the previous one. However, as Nepal lacks the required machine and skilled manpower, samples are being sent abroad for testing. Samples of three Nepalese returning from the UK were detected a change in the genes of the virus. Following a test of their samples in Hong Kong, the presence of the new variant was confirmed on Monday. Since PCR tests are incapable of detecting the new variant, the government is compelled to send samples abroad for testing, which has been expensive. Health experts warn of a looming crisis in the absence of gene sequencing mechanism. Meanwhile, the cost of gene sequencing machine cost up to 150 million rupees. Experts have called on the government to expedite efforts to introduce the system before the crisis spirals out of control. The government formed the National Farmers Commission four years ago, aiming to address the grievances of farmers. However, the commission has failed in identifying the problems, has let alone addressed them, and the commission has been limited to merely formality. It may be recalled during the formation of the commission back in 2017, sugarcane farmers were staging protests demanding their arrears be cleared. The farmers have been staging protests every year since few years as their payments are still due. However, neither the government nor the commission has played their part. The problems of sugarcane farmers are not the only problem the commission has failed to address. The commission was indifferent during acute shortage of chemical fertilizers and high-handed 
competitiveness of middlemen and vegetable market. The commission officials, meanwhile, spent their tenure in meetings and seminars. The commission has received a budget of around 35 million rupees for the ongoing fiscal year compared to 56 million rupees last year. However, none of the budget has been spent for the agitating farmers. Critics attribute political appointments as the reason for the commission's failure to function as expected. The Commission's failure to carry out its primary job of addressing farmers' issue and the indifference seen on part of the officials has raised questions on the body's existence itself. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked locals in Bhutan district why have leaders and party cadres failed to work for the public. Let's take a look at what they had to say. व्यक्ति प्रधान भएर चल्नु भएको छ म नै सर्वे सर्वा हो भन्ने प्रवृत्ति नेताहरुमा देखिएको छ आफ्ना छोरा दाइ भाइ सबैले बनाउने प्रोसेसमा गयो के कानून भन्दा पनि हामी माथिल्लो लेभलमा छौ भनेर आफुलाई नै सर्वश्रेष्ठ ठानी राख्नु भएको छ नोभिपन देशको लागि देशको लागि र अब जनताको लागि नगरेर आफ्नो स्वार्थको लागि गर्ने र धन कमाउने बस्ने Time now for our segment Public Polls, where it takes us with your opinion. And here's the question What's your take on the government's decision to transfer officials arbitrarily? The options are option A, unavoidable, option B, mockery of law, and option C, show of power. The voting is on. Type any WS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. And that's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.